Hey guys, welcome to another Chaos Art tutorial, and in this video today, you're going to be relearning how to render videos in After Effects. I've made this video previously, um, it's actually on my channel currently, it says how to render um, a video in After Effects, and it's pretty decent, I'm not going to lie, it's not the best video I've ever made. I made it about a year ago whenever I started YouTube, and um, it seemed to help out a lot of people. Um, I had a huge issue with trying to figure this out at first whenever I've you know, my first videos that I ever made with this, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I keep saving it, but it's in .ae file, what is that even, I don't, I don't know what this is, and I was only familiar with Photoshop. Um, but, I watched a video once, showed me how to do it, and I was like, guys, I gotta show everyone how to do this. And now I'm back once again to try to clear up a couple questions and give you a, a better quality video. So, first thing that you want to do is make sure that you are on your main composition. Um, make sure you're not on one of your sub compositions or something like that. You need a main composition that has everything in it. All of your sub comps, all of your files, everything that you need that you want rendered. So you can see that I'm on my main composition now, and this is what you're going to be seeing at the end of this video. So this is, you know, what you're going to get. Um, this is what's going to be rendered. I couldn't stress that anymore. That's like one of the main questions I got. The other one was audio, but that's going to come up next with audio make sure that you have the files that you want to have audio enabled with audio ones that you don't to not so these four videos you see here are all in sub compositions let's get a main video that's one of them it has audio i made sure the audio is off because you do not want audio for five videos playing at once unless that's what you're trying to do um, so make sure you go to your main composition, and you can see here on the left side, there's a microphone, and if you click it, nothing happens, it just asks you to move it. But, you can turn audio on, and you can turn audio off. I have my audio off on these four videos. And then, I have a sound layer at the very bottom, which is a song, which, you know, actually... Okay, so you got a little bit of you know, uh, sneak peek of that. The audio file at the very bottom, which was what I want playing, has the audio enabled with this little microphone. I'm not trying to dumb it down for you, it's just I had a million and one people ask me, hey, I don't have audio. That's your first step. Make sure that is right. Second step is to check it in your composition settings, is which is what we're going to do now. So once you're on your main comp, you have everything how you like it, your audio is working. Go to composition, oh, excuse me, add to render queue, and render queue will pop up here at the bottom. Most likely it'll look something like this, since you potentially have tried to render before. Um, I just like to delete the top one because I don't need it, and I always try to make sure I have a fresh one here at the bottom and it's what I need. Sometimes I'll just delete all of them that are down here and start over again just to make sure. And what you're going to do, want to start off by doing is go to render settings, which should be on best settings. Otherwise, make sure they're like this. Okay, that's all the time I'm going to give you. So, you quality, best, of course. Resolution, full. Size, whatever your size is. And then the rest of these settings, don't mess with them unless you are advanced and you need to for whatever reason. Frame rate. This is a big one. I highly stress making sure that your composition frame rate and your render frame rate are the same. I could change my frame rate to 100 FPS if I wanted to, but I'm not, because my composition is at 2997, which is use comps frame rate. It just helps with your keyframes, it just looks better. If you change your composition frame rate to, you keep it at 30, but you want to render in 60, okay, you can do it. After Effects gives you that option. But I just don't, it's not something that I feel good doing as a cinematographer. Then you have your start, end, and duration time, which you can change of your video, which I once again recommend doing within the composition settings of each comp, and just press OK. Then output mode, default and lossless, which is an AVI file, which is absolutely enormous. Uh, it's essentially uncompressed footage, uh, which is what I'm actually using, which is a huge part of doing this, and I've recently learned this myself with using uncompressed footage. You need to use an encoder to shrink it. It is just a pain, such a pain, to try to import a 10 gig file or a 20 gig file into After Effects, then edit it, then render it, and hope that it takes it down to a fourth of the size. And then you still couldn't upload it to YouTube within a reasonable amount of time. 
So if you're using a coder, I changed a 7 gig file into less than a 1 gig file with no loss of quality whatsoever and it was compressed. That was with Adobe Encoder and it kept my default files. It was just amazing. And I recommend that if you have an enormously large video file and you're like, oh my god, I can't even move this to my external hard drive or anything. Just make sure that you're using an encoder or something like that. I recommend Adobe's encoder um, just because of how good it is. Uh, so I'm going to change the format from AVI to QuickTime. If you don't have QuickTime, um, make you might want to check your settings. Make sure you actually have QuickTime installed. Um, AVI is a good secondary option. Yay, it is you know very large. But I'm going to stick with QuickTime for the sake of this video. So, and then pre-render action, none. Channels, RGB, depth, millions of colors, color, pre-multiplied, matted, and then format options. You're gonna do video codec, H.264, H.264. This is what YouTube recommends you upload for, um, or your video file is. I recommend this for everything, actually. If you're uploading to uh, Vimeo or YouTube or Daily Motion or whatever you like to use for your videos, I guess, make sure that it's in H.264 or if you are more advanced, I'm sure you could find something that's a heck of a lot higher quality, but this is what I recommend for just a good roundabout video output. It just gives you great quality, great audio quality, it looks good, sounds good, not huge file, it's just all around recommended by most people that make videos. And then you're going to do basic video settings, quality, 100 of course, I don't need to worry about video size, so I make sure I'm at 100% quality. And then advanced settings, I don't mess with my keyframes since I do that within my composition. Bit rate, don't want to limit it, once again, not too worried about the file size, and just press OK. Alright, so you can resize your video if you want to by checking this and resizing to whatever you would like. And then there are options over here on the side. Excuse me, resize quality high of course, if you're going to resize. Lock aspect ratio, highly recommended so you don't mess up your dimensions. And uncheck that. And then you have crop, which you can crop the top, left, bottom, and right. Once again, recommend doing it within your composition settings unless you absolutely have to do it after uh, um, post rendering in the, uh, or sorry, excuse me, pre rendering, you need to do this. But if you need to do it while you're rendering, this is an option. And go ahead and take that off. Stage 2 to audio, guys. Audio output auto. Once again, audio output auto. So many people, I mean, I just cannot stress this enough. Make sure you are either on auto or on. If you are on off and it is grayed out, this is what it looks like. You have no audio. If it is completely grayed out, you can't even change it. You do not have an audio file enabled. All your microphones are off or something. You, there is no audio for it to render. So make sure your audio output is either on on or auto. Now I keep it at 48.000, the second option. Literally have never used it, ever, because it's always been grayed out for me. I assume because I don't have the sound card or something like that. Then I keep it on stereo. And format options has a whole load of options. Um, no, not really. Audio codec, AAC, just uncompressed if you would like, but I prefer AAC. YouTube recommends AAC. I'm not sure about other... Um, video websites, but uh, AAC seems to be uh, pretty decent quality. Um, I've seen a little bit of loss compared to uncompressed, but again with that file size, if you are just, for if you're rendering a movie and your file size is enormous, I understand. Um, but for the sake of YouTube, everyone knows the audio quality on YouTube isn't the best in the world, so AAC will get you by with that and it'll upload you a lot quicker. And then press OK. Next you're going to go to output output 2 and mine is default named main comp whatever your composition name is is what's going to render to automatically just select that and I'm going to render to my desktop normally you would just decide wherever you want to render to save as quicktime.mov name this youtube there we go youtube tutorial I almost forgot how to spell tutorial for a minute Alright, so file name, YouTube tutorial, QuickTime, don't want to save in subfolder, save, and now it's saved as that, and press render. Congratulations, 
you have rendered your first video. Hopefully not your first, but if it is, congratulations. <clears throat> There's a couple settings that you can see here uh, that are going to help you out with knowing how long it's going to take for your video. There's the lapse time, 15 seconds, time remaining, roughly 5 minutes. This is while I'm recording as well. That's actually really well timed. Um, current render, you can see, um, yeah, there it is. Alright, different options down here, free disk space, 192 gigs, and then final size, changing constantly, um, file size, all these different things, great, just information to know if you care. Um, <laughs> just go ahead and close this, then you can stop it or pause it if you need to, stopping will completely stop the render and will not let you change anything. It is done. Just at that point that it stopped rendering, that's the video that you have. Pause will let you pause it and start up again if you need to. What it, you need to go on, um, you know, Pinterest or something and find a dinner recipe in the middle of your render, or you could just minimize After Effects. But you know, then it's telling you how long your video is, how many frames there are, most recent error, none, total time elapsed, one minute, 14, 15 seconds. Uh, render started this time or this date at this time. How much RAM is being used is 73%, 72%, uh, used of 7.7 .7 gigs allotted to After Effects. Um, I went to my preferences, I think it's under composition, and changed it to only leaving half a gig of memory left for other programs to run, which is what I recommend if you don't have that much memory. So as you can see now, I'm running Fraps and this, and it's rendering within a reasonable amount of time and only using 72% of the RAM I let it use. Um, I'm only running 8 gigs of RAM at the moment, soon to be 16, and this render would have already been done by now. So, and then message rendering one of one. There's basically all the um, all the tips and tricks to rendering a video, and you can't go back. None of these will open. You are stuck on render queue because it doesn't want you to mess with anything while it's rendering. Um, so that's not an error. That's actually a, just a, kind of a fail safe within After Effects. So. Thank you for watching guys, I really hope this helped you out a little bit and give you a little bit higher quality video than the uh, last video that I uploaded on this subject. And guys, if you need any questions or have any questions need any help with anything, please let me know. Uh, my website is actually in the description. Optimal to go there and um, just do the little contact form. It's like four questions. It's your name, uh, I think it's your email and a comment, that's it. But it just helps me get to you faster because I'm not necessarily home all the time to look at my YouTube videos. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the uh, comments that you guys are leaving. And let me know if you want a video on Adobe Encoder. I'll be able to do that as soon as possible and help you guys have, hopefully not have these massive file sizes. So have a great day and I'll see you soon.